Hi, welcome to PK's classes. Today we will study anticholinergics. We have already studied cholinergics or cholinergic drugs, and in anticholinergics we will uh, uh, specifically restrict our discussion to the muscarinic receptor antagonist, means the directly acting anticholinergics, because uh, other drugs um, also act on the ganglion. As you know, uh, we have the CNS, then we have the ganglion, and from the ganglion, uh, the neuron goes to the periphery. So, this ganglion uh, is uh, a mass of uh, nerve fibers outside CNS. Uh, sorry, mass of cell bodies outside CNS. Then, uh, from here, it goes to periphery. And this can be sympathetic ganglia and parasympathetic ganglia. And at ganglia, the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. So, if uh, we will use indirectly acting uh, uh, anticholinergics, Okay, then they will have action on the ganglion also. So, we will restrict our discussion to only anticholinergics mainly on, as muscarinic receptor antagonists or we can call them as parasympatholytics. As already discussed previously, we have five types of muscarinic receptors M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. So, the blockers of all those receptors can be used as anticholinergic. So, M1 receptor blocker like pyrenzepine, telenzepine, M2 receptor blocker, tryptamine, galamine, M3 receptor blocker, hexahydrosila, diphenidyl, uh, darifenacin, M4 receptor blocker, himbacin, and we don't have M5 receptor blocker till then. Then, non selective muscarine receptor antagonists, which will block all the muscarine receptors. And we can classify them as natural, semi-synthetic and synthetic. Natural, atropine or hyoscyamine and hyoscine or scopolamine. Semi-synthetic, homotropine, atropine, methonitrate, hyoscine, butyl bromide, ipratropium bromide, teotropium bromide. Then synthetic, eucatropine, cyclopentolate, tropicamide, dicyclamine, oxybutyrin and uh, dicycloverine. Then how they are used, uh, what are the uses of parasympatholytics? Uh, uh, we can use them for ophthalmic examination. We, if you remember, adrenaline can be used as a sympathomimetic and similar actions with parasympatholytic and uh, hyoscine is preferred because of shorter duration of action and all other drugs like atropine, homotropine, tropicamide also can be used and the parasympatholytics they decrease the secretion so, so they can be used as anti-cold tablet they will decrease the nasal secretion then they can uh, dilate the bronchioles so we can use them in bronchial asthma and uh, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and drugs like ipratropium can be used but these are all second line drugs uh, not preferred uh, in this case preferred drug is uh, beta 2 agonist albutamol terbutaline etc then we can also uh, use them in synchro, syncope and bradycardia and uh, in case of GI hypermotility also, we can use to decrease the motility. In peptic ulcer, we can use to reduce the acid secretion, uh, again as second line drug because the drug of choice are H2 receptor antagonists and proton pump inhibitors. Then acetylcholine has a role in the uh, motion sickness also. Uh, so, vomiting during traveling and uh, the drug of choice can be hyoscine. Then uh, the Parkinson symptoms, uh, the cholinergic uh, action can be blocked by use of uh, benztropium. Then we can use these drugs as pre-anesthetic medication to decrease various secretions 
secretions can be decreased and uh, also for causing urinary tension constipation okay so uh, these actions associated with uh, general anesthetics can be decreased uh, by use of uh, anticholinergics as pre anesthetic medication then we can also uh, use a spasmolytic agent in case of spasm of smooth muscles we can use it uh, so dicyclamine is the drug of choice then we can uh, use the anticholinergic drugs uh, as antidote in case of uh, organophosphate poisoning uh, carbamate poisoning and um, mostly organophosphate poisoning uh, occurs uh, and uh, they are the insecticide compounds so insecticide poisoning in all these cases they can be used and mushroom poisoning also shows cholinergic symptoms so you, so you can also use anticholinergic drugs in case of mushroom poisoning thank you